everybody, just to let you know, before we start anything, this is going to be a completely spoiler review. So if you don't want to know spoilers at all for Spider-Man No Way Home, I have done a non-spoiler review on my channel, and the link is in the description box. But without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get into just the full spoilers. First thing, this movie is absolutely incredible. The rumours are true. All of them are damn True. We get Charlie Cox show up in here as Matt Murdock, Daredevil, of course. We've also got Tobey Maguire returning from the Sam Raimi trilogies, of course, as Peter Parker, Spider-Man. And we've got Andrew Garfield returning as Peter Parker, Spider-Man from his universe. So let's talk about all how this all kind of breaks down. So the first kind of spoiler that we get is the movie starts off where Far From Home ends basically mysterious revealing peter parker is of course spider-man spider-man is of course concerned that everyone now knows who he is and he has no peace wherever he goes half the public are kind of rooting from half them think that he's a complete menace inside with like j jonah jameson so when they all kind of know about this he kind of takes into hiding and he kind of like is wondering like okay well how am i going to kind of like hide myself away from everyone he doesn't want to be in the full spotlight as peter parker he just wants to live his life and you know of course with mj and ned and his aunt may we cut to a couple of scenes later he goes into a police station and the police are interrogating him and his friends one by one they're interrogating mj they're interrogating ned and him and pretty much trying to just get any evidence that they can to essentially lock up peter parker but they've kind of got no physical evidence because obviously throughout this entire time he's been in the mask etc so after this all happens he kind of moves i believe into happy hogan's place with aunt may and when he moves into there long behold sat at the dinner table when they're speaking to a lawyer is matt murdoch now this is the only scene i believe in the movie unless i missed him in the background that we actually only see him in so it's very interesting that they included his appearance in here. I felt like they could have done a lot more of his character, especially as they introduced him into the MCU. But I guess this is a little tease as such for things to come. But the one cool thing is in this scene is that uh, someone in the public throws a brick through the window, but Matt Murdock catches said brick. And Tom Holland, Spider-Man, is like, well, how the hell did you just do that? And yeah, you know, that tease there of everything Netflix has built in the Daredevil series. And I really hope that we see Matt Murdock in more movies and of course in a brand new TV series as well. So as the movie progresses on, and yeah, this is so much shit to talk about, guys. It's incredible. So when Doctor Strange and Peter Parker are making this spell, basically Tom Holland's life is ruined at this point and it stops MJ, stops Ned and it also stops him from getting into their college or universities, which is MIT. So because of this, he goes to Stephen Strange and says, look, Stephen, I... Or, you know, Doctor Strange, but then he says, like, Stephen, etc. And they have this whole comedy kind of thing. Basically, when he's talking to them and he wants this spell done, he basically says, look, he wants everyone to forget that he's Peter Parker. So, of course, Doctor Strange starts conjuring up this spell. But then one by one, he's saying, well, actually, I don't want MJ to forget. I don't want Ned to forget. I don't want Aunt May to forget. And because he causes all these different rifts in this spell that interrupts the original spell, it basically causes this big explosion that you see in this trailer where you see like all the purple colors and vibrant colors around in this one part however dr strange does manage to kind of contain the full spell but he does say that a couple of the characters have managed to slip through the reins and this is where peter parker speaks to flash thompson because he wants to get mj and ned into mit and it basically he goes onto the bridge scene what we see in the trailer with doc ock and this is where he makes his first appearance peter parker is going to this woman who's like the examining board and saying like look please give these a chance i don't care about me but give those two a chance and before she can kind of speak you know the bridge starts rumbling the sound of the imax really just amplified and doc ock makes his appearance he's like hello peter honestly that's so so awesome they end up having a fight Tom Holland's like, look, I am not your Peter Parker. I am Peter Parker, but I'm not the one you're about. I don't know what you are going on about because Doc Ock's going on like, oh, the power of the sun. And, you know, that, like, they're reminiscent of the end of Spider-Man 2. He's going on about that. After a short battle in the shows in the trailer, Tom Holland reveals himself. He shows that he isn't, in fact, the Peter Parker that Doc Ock knows, but he is a Peter Parker of this current universe. The magic spells basically go into Doctor Strange's Sanctorum. He, he is under there as well with the lizard. Yeah, you know, slowly one by one, we start seeing Electro, we start seeing the lizard, of course, Sandman. 
we see them all going on. And of course, we get Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin on the bridge who isn't caught at that point. So fast forward later on into the movie and we've got where Doctor Strange and Peter Parker are having a debate. You know, Doctor Strange just wants to get the spell done. He's caught all the villains and he just wants to send them back to their home planet. But Peter feels sorry for them because they all die at the hands of Spider-Man. So he's in two minds. And anyway, it leads to this kind of multi-dimension chase between him and Doctor Strange, which is phenomenal. The CG in this very much reminds me of Inception. It is generally incredible. And Spider-Man uses geometry and math to basically outnumber Doctor Strange and he tangles them up into his own kind of portal so he can then carry on what he wants to do on Earth and he wants to get them all over to his place and he's got a lot of technology there of course with Stark's tech that they've left and he wants to kind of fix these villains. He wants to cure these villains as such. Willem Dafoe's character, he breaks the mask, the original Sam Raimi mask, and he goes into the feast shelter where Aunt May works, and basically he's claimed to be homeless because he's not Aussie. Oscorp doesn't exist at this point. For example, Doc Ock's kind of chip on the back of his neck is just broken. Basically, the tentacles are controlling him, but he makes a chip where he controls the tentacles. So, Doc Ock is actually finally happy because he's very miserable, he's moody, he's upset, he's wondering what the hell is going on of course in this whole multiverse but then in the meantime he then creates like an arc reactor for Electro to contain the electricity basically he's trying to work on them one by one but Sandman not really mentioned that much Green Goblin doesn't take a liking to this at all he is then kind of tormented with the half because so when he's in that apartment with Peter Parker and all the rest of these villains the inside menacing voice of Green Goblin really takes over him and he plots to try kill Peter Parker now it all goes out into a building explosion in the trailer Feast does get blown up because at the end of this scene Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin throws one of those pumpkin bombs and the pumpkin bombs basically Tom Holden tries to stop it but doesn't fully stop it it knocks Aunt May out it also knocks him out and when it comes to yeah Aunt May dies in this movie which was just so upsetting and the emotion that Peter Parker expressed Tom Holland's expressions as Peter Parker in that scene is just it was so so tough to watch as the movie progresses and as Doctor Strange is trapped in his own portal Ned however has the rings where he can create portals and he slowly starts to learn this magic because at first he's like well what's going on and Kelly does a movement and Ozzy opens up a portal later on in the movie because at this point Electro wants to harness all the power he actually steals like an arc reactor from the Stark industry technologies in the apartment so he goes on kind of just a crazy rampage Sandman also doesn't want to be turned into cured because he just thinks in general like he is cured but he's also doesn't want to be controlled by the this brand new Peter Parker who he doesn't know or trust he just wants to go home to his daughter Doc Ock at this point is kind of the only good guy I guess so to say with Tom Holland's Peter Parker the rest of them yeah they're all just for themselves and the lizard of course wants to just cause chaos so while they're on the run and going crazy Peter Parker at this point is devastated he goes to his own spot he is just absolutely beside himself that Aunt May has died he's all scarred on the face he's all bloodied he's just an absolute wreck at this point in this meantime MJ has the box that you see in the trailer that belongs to Doctor Strange that contains this spell and there's a button on this box where if you press it all the multiverse people who's coming like Doc Ock, Green Goblin etc will go back to their own multiverses she is going to be pressing this button but then Ned's character learns about the portal and he opens this portal and lo and behold standing right there is Andrew Garfield dressed in his Spider-Man costume my face lit up I shed a tear at this point because they shout Peter because they're looking for Tom Holland's Peter Parker but they don't know where he is so when they see that Peter they're thinking it looks a little bit different but this could be him anyway Andrew Garfield's Peter comes out of this portal into this house of Ned's and has this amazing moment of MJ is throwing bread at him saying look prove that you're Spider-Man climb on a wall for us do whatever you need to to prove that you're Spider-Man so after he proves that he's Spider-Man Ned then opens up another portal and out steps Toby Maguire and the chills I got was just 
insane. No, he is not dressed in his Spider-Man costume at this point. He's just dressed in regular clothing. He certainly looks like an older, more mature Spider-Man. A little bit like into the Spider-Verse. And this is where we get our first interaction ever between Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Where they actually have a little scene where they web each other. But the cool thing is, Tobey Maguire webs Andrew Garfield's web slinger. But of course, Tobey Maguire's is naturally through his veins. Which is just... It's insane. They have honestly insane moments. So after a couple of moments, MJ realizes that Tom Holland's Peter Parker may be in a specific area for just like having time to himself because obviously he's just so distraught about Aunt May. And long and behold, she brings both Peter Parkers to him. And at first, he's like, what the hell is going on? But then after a small emotional a moment about follow other Spider-Mens, Tommy McGuire and Peter Parker, they mentioned about Uncle Ben and how they've been destroyed by their loved ones and lost, and of course, and Garfield mentions Gwen, which was just so heartbreaking. They make a plan to try cure these villains. They don't necessarily want to send them back and send them dead, but they want to cure them and get rid of any kind of bad thoughts going on in their heads. So they all have moments in this science lab where they're all kind of working on individual projects. And then we finally get basically the Spider-Man meme that everyone knows and loves. Ned shouts for Peter Parker and they all look at each other and they all point at each other and say, Peter Parker. It was, wow, the meme came true. So after all three respective Peter Parkers create cures for these villains, they then go and set up this plan to go to this Statue of Liberty, which is getting made into like a Captain America shield, and I guess honouring Captain America. They go into this final battle in this third act, where you see it in the trailer, that scaffolding scene with Electro, Sandman and the Lizard, and you just see Tom Holland, Spider-Man. Well, actually, that scene is, of course, Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, and Tobey Maguire. But while they're in this scaffolding and waiting for the bad guys to show up, they have a lot of moments together. Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man's interacting, Tom Holland's interacting with them both. They all just have some great moments. And, of course, Tobey Maguire mentions about his back, where he's like, oh, my back! That is mentioned, that is referenced, in this movie wow honestly just give me chills and they all have this big massive battle the spider-mans decide well actually let's team up together at this point and let's cure all these villains but one by one so they start with the sandman then they take on electro and then they're leaving the lizard till last but in this meantime ned and mj well ned creates a portal with him and mj and he looks to close the portal but as the battle goes on the lizard realizes the portal's open and he brings ned and mj to this scaffolding fight whereas before they were in kind of like the the lab and this is where this moment is incredible because they do manage to heal the sandman they also manage to heal Electro. And then when it comes to the lizard, he brings them out. And in that scene in the trailer, MG is fallen. It is Tom Holland that goes after her. However, he gets halfway down, almost close to the hand you see in the trailer. And the scaffold and takes him off. And this is the moment we get where Andrew Garfield redeems himself and gets a chance to redeem himself. As he swoops down and he swings and he captures MG. He saves her from dying right at the last minute, which was just really fulfilling. And, oh, wow, you know, that just, yeah, it's just that moment itself really made you feel for Gwen and really made me tear up. Honestly, that was just so, so awesome. As they manage to do all this and stop these villains and get the cures, however, the Green Goblin is left. When they think it's all over, no, the Green Goblin is is left by this point the shield on the statue of liberty completely crashes it's just not there anymore it's landed basically on the end of the statue of liberty into the water at the end we get a fight between tom holland's spider-man and of course willem defoe's green goblin so they're battling it out etc and tom holland is beating the shit out of him peter parker is really venting this frustration because of course willem defoe's green goblin was the one who threw the pumpkin bomb at feast where aunt may got killed so he's been oh when tom holland's peter parker is going to use the glider against willem defoe toby Maguire version of spider-man is the one that stops him and holds the glider up in the air to stop him from killing green goblin then stabs toby Maguire's spider-man 
putting them out of action for now. Tom Holland saves the day with getting the cure and put it inside the Green Goblin. Well, long behold, Tobey Maguire is fine. He makes a joke of this with Andrew Garfield saying, well, I've been stabbed before. The multiverse is starting to crack in. Doctor Strange is really having a hard time controlling all of this. He's wondering, how am I going to stop this? And when he is trying to stop this, there's no other way to stop it. But Peter Parker comes up with a suggestion. The only way we're going to fix this is if everyone forgets that I am Spider-Man and forgets about him in general. That is the only way that they can. And he has an emotional scene where he says his goodbyes to Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. He says goodbye to Ned and MJ, but she actually says, I love you to him. After that scene, we get a little bit of a glimpse into the life of Tom Holland's new life as Peter Parker, where he's got his own apartment with, of course, being rent. And he goes to this coffee shop where he sees that MJ works, but of course she doesn't know him. Ned doesn't know him at all. None of them do. It's so upsetting that no one knows who he is now. Not even Doctor Strange or any of the Avengers. They won't have a clue who Tom Holland's Peter Parker Spider-Man is anymore. So after that spell, all the villains, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, they go back to their own multiverses. They kind of get like zapped away back to their own multiverses. And the movie ends with an amazing, amazing scene. A lot of people have been fed up of the Iron Spider suit. Long behold, that doesn't exist anymore. And Tom Holland Spider-Man is actually supporting the original red and blue Spider-Man outfit. And that's how the movie ends. But there is two post credit scenes. The first post credit scene, we actually see Tom Hardy's Venom at a bar talking to a man who had lost his family five years ago with the snap of Thanos. And as they're talking away, he actually gets kind of this zapped back to his multiverse. But there's a little bit of Venom symbiote laying on the bar, which is certainly teased for the MCU coming up because Tom Hardy's Venom references the Hulk and stuff when he's talking to this guy. And that's where that first end credit scene ends. And the second end credit scene is basically a trailer for Doctor Strange and the multiverse of madness have you seen spider-man no way home if you have leave your comments down below and let me know what you thought of the movie and what your favorite moment of this was in the meantime please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't until the next time i'll see you i'll be seeing you later